despite being none other than Nala's mother, her story remains a mystery to this day. Today, I'm here to bring you my version of her story to finally understand the true meaning behind her character. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to always be updated on the latest Lion King stories. This is Sarafina's story. She was just born. Her name was Sarafina. The Dunia Pride was a chill and friendly community of lions. The weather was great and there were no external threats to worry about. Many lions were part of this pride. Two of them were Aberash and Emem, parents of Sarafina and long friends of Chiapo and Achille, also known as Sarabi's parents and king and queen of the Dunia Pride. Sarafina and Sarabi were a friendship at first sight. Both were the only two female cubs in the whole pride, Sarabi being the older one. They spent most of their time together. One morning, a rogue lion had come from another pride. He didn't say his name, but he looked dirty and hungry. He woke up the whole Dunya pride with his screams. They are coming, they are near, he was repeating in a loop. The animals looked at him strangely, and everyone started hiding behind the rocks and bushes to not be seen by this lion. They thought he was crazy. Before Chiapo could come out and try to offer help to this rogue lion, he was already gone. Nobody knew what he meant, but the incident was forgotten after a few days. However, Serafina never forgot about it, and always observed every minimal change in the environment including watching in the distance to see if the rogue lion was still nearby. She found the perfect spot to observe the whole territory. But the day came, the day where everything changed. It was night, everyone was asleep and a scream could be heard from the distance. Only Serafina and Sarabi woke up. Serafina went to her observer spot to see what was going on. A flood of hyenas had just entered the territory, devouring everything they encountered, leaving a trail of bones behind them. She and Sarabi rushed back to the lion's cave to wake them up and warn them of what they had just seen. But the time spent on just doing that was too much. And when everyone was ready to fight the problem, it was already too late. Serafina and Sarabi were told to stay in a hidden cave made exactly for its purpose, hide from eventual predators. The cave was big enough just to fit the two cubs inside, and while both were there, the things they could hear were indescribable to anyone. Roars and groans, hits and screams of help. For the first few minutes, it was like that. A growing sound of trial and pain. But as time passed, the roars counted were fewer and fewer, and the whole ambience was starting to get quiet. What came from the hyenas were not groans anymore, but laughs. The two cubs were crying and trembling, fully in panic, until Achille, the queen of the pride, the mother of Sarabi, all injured and covered in wounds, stormed to the hidden cave and told Serafina and Sarabi to run, no matter what direction, but to run as quickly as they could without looking back. Achille told the two that one day they were going to meet again. Who knows if that was the truth. They ran, crossing the whole Dunia Pride to get further from it. They ran through all the rubble, fallen trees, animal bones, and fire. Serafina, being the youngest, was also the slowest of the two, and Sarabi had to look back from time to time to see if she was doing all right. What Sarabi had seen during the escape, she will never forget.
Some weeks had passed. Serafina and Sarabi were living as nomads, searching for a better place. It was hard. The trauma of what had happened, especially at such a young age, made it more difficult for them. Fortunately, they knew how to support each other. They learned how to eat from the vegetation and hunt smaller prey. However, they couldn't find a stable place to live in, as most of them were already occupied territories from not-so-friendly animals. At a certain point, they felt lost. They had explored almost everything and had no energy to keep searching for new lands. Despite all this, Serafina was a great observer and always found the best places to observe the horizon from and guide her friend to the next best territory. For a while, they both took a rest, but it wouldn't last long, or else they would finish their resources. The day before leaving again, Serafina went to a tall rock to observe where their next path was going to lead, but what she saw left her stone cold from panic. There was a pack of animals that was coming from the horizon, and they were advancing fast. It was clear that they were predators from the way they were scanning the territory, but they were too far away to understand which kind of animal they were. Sarfina warned Sarabi, but little hope had the two. If they went back, there was the risk that the hyenas that invaded the Dunia Pride would find them, but if they went straight, they were certainly going to be noticed by the herd of predators. At the sides, there were mountains, and no real way to go through them. They had one more day at most to make a plan, and leave. They didn't sleep that night. The next day, with no real choice to make, they went off to the mountains. Interestingly, a young lion with a red mane could be seen playing in the distance. When they arrived, they greeted him. He was playing chasing butterflies near a small creek. His name was Matuta. Serafina asked him why was he so alone, being so young like them, and he, almost in a joking way, replied, I could ask you the same. Sarabi loudly said, They are near. Matuta, without the need for explanations, immediately knew who she was referring to. He told both to follow him. He brought them to a secret passage that allowed them to get to the other side of the mountain. Once safe, Serafina asked him if he knew who they were. Matuta replied that he calls them the Outlanders. Evil and bloodthirsty lions who don't have a home and wander in the far lands searching for any animal to eat or just kill for the pleasure of it. Whatever was the case, thanks to Matuta, Sarabi and Serafina had found a new home. After he was asked, Matuta told Sarabi and Serafina his experience with the Outlanders. He was even younger than now, a very little cub with no home and nowhere to go. Being small and weak, the world was a very hostile place, especially for him. One day, for the first time, he saw animals of his species in the distance. They were lions. Matuta came to them, but little he knew what their real intentions were. When he found out, he ran, but these evil lions were unstoppable. It was almost like they never got tired. When he finally found a tree, he climbed on it, but when he looked down, he realized they were gone. Looking not so far away, there was a big rock and some animals could be seen over there. When he tried to climb down, he realized he was stuck in the tree. He was too small to jump off without hurting himself. Matuta shouted for help, but he was too far away from others to be noticed by anyone. 
A few moments later, Matuta heard a cracking noise coming from under his paws. The branch underneath him was about to break, and eventually, it did. Right when he was falling, he stopped me there. Incredibly, he was levitating thanks to some big lions that had come from the Pride Rock just to save him. But they were no ordinary big lions. They were the Lion Guards. The reason why Matuta agreed to tell his story was to reassure the two female cubs to go ask for help over the big rock in the distance. They'll give you everything you need, and there are many friendly animals, he said. Serafina and Sarabi set off, but Matuta didn't follow them. He said he didn't belong there, but one day they will surely meet again. They arrived and went up this big rock. Two lions came out from the cave. Matuta sent us here, the two young lioness said. I am King Ahadi and she is Queen Uru. Welcome to the Pride Lands. Years were passing, and thanks to Uru and Ahadi, Serafina and Sarabi could grow happily as part of the Pride. Matuta used to return for some weeks every season to visit the Pride and Serafina, with which he had established a strong friendship that developed into something more over the years. Serafina was probably the only lioness alive to know Matuta's mysterious story and why he was always alone. However, this is a different story and a very long story of its own. When adulthood came, after Sarabi and Mufasa had their son Simba, Matuta told Serafina that he had to go and he didn't know when he would return. Serafina acknowledged knowing that what he was going to do was something he was waiting for his whole life. Before going, they had their daughter Nala, and then Matuta set off and never returned. Since that day, Serafina always looked at the stars for a sign from the great kings of the past that he was still alive. As time passed, things started to worsen, mainly because of Scar. After the death of Mufasa, the Pride Lands were doomed. Simba disappeared, Scar had taken over the Pride, becoming the new king and giving power to the hyenas. However, it all happened gradually. During the first years, it seemed like Scar's tyranny was not enough to let the Pride fall even after letting the hyenas enter the Pride Lands. Serafina was the only one that understood Scar in a certain way. She was the only one to whom he opened to and revealed the trauma of the death of his mother, Uru. Thanks to Serafina, Scar was slowly redeeming himself and started to show genuine emotions towards her, which ended up with the birth of their son, Mitu. Unfortunately, one day, a group of nomad lionesses showed up to the Pride in search of a home. The leader of this group was Zira, the daughter of the leaders of a group previously known as the Outlanders. Scar ended up falling in doom, again. Corrupted by Zira's evil mind and thirst for power, he ended up making the Pride Lands decay into the aridest wasteland ever existed. Serafina now lived hidden to protect Mitu, the main target of Scar and Zira who wanted him as Scar's heir. Mitu had time to grow throughout the years despite their attempts to make him evil. He Fortunately, had acquired Serafina's mentality and, uh, thanks to her half-sister Nala, who always protected him from Scar's tyranny, he learned to distinguish the good and the bad. Serafina told him about Matuta, Nala's dad, 
despite not being Mitu's father, he always considered him as such or as a very near figure that inspired him and protected him from far away. Mitu, a cub grown in a destroyed and desert land, mentally abused by Scar for his malicious purposes, now knew what his life mission was. He had to find Matuta for a reason that only Serafina and he knew of. After some years, he finally took off in search of Matuta. But that's a long story. The story of Me Too. Serafina's role in the main story ends here, but her story doesn't end right here. There is a reason why she doesn't appear in The Lion King 2, and we will find out why on Me Too's story and the story of Nala's father, so stay tuned for that. If you watched till here, let me know by leaving a like, and if you have any theory on how this story will continue, definitely tell me in the comments. Also, check out the artist that made the artworks used in this video, the link is in the description. I'm Oscari, and I wish you a good night.